my own research is try to understand what really is intelligence, like what is the origins of intelligence and what is the mechanism that bring us to intelligence. And one thing that's very interesting that I want to share with all of you is that intelligence is not as you think that, you know, the really amazing AI only, or if you think about the, the most intelligent person like Einstein. Intelligence is everywhere. The fact that you know how to sit. Do you know how difficult it is to sit? Sangat menarik apa yang dijelaskan oleh Wamen secara kristih mengenai penelitian kognitif dan bagaimana kecerdasan itu bekerja, bagaimana mekanisme kecerdasan manusia yang bekerja secara unik serta ada di mana-mana. Seperti apa selengkapnya, mari kita saksikan bersama-sama berikut ini. Stella, you, you say that I have to call you Stella. It's kind of weird. Of course, just call me Stella. So, it's Professor okay. Stella. <laughs> Professor Stella. I call her Professor. Is, is, is that Jensen or is that AI? <laughs> <laughs> Professor <So>. Christie. <laughs> okay, but then I will call you Professor Stella. Is okay? Yes. Okay, Professor Stella. So your core research is about uh, cognitive research, right? It's about uh, how human think, how human learn, how human solve problems. So can you uh, explain to us about this cognitive research related with the AI development? Sure. Um, I first want to say what a great honor to be here with two amazing people, with Jensen and with Professor Ayu, and with all of you. It's such a great honor. Thank you for great having me honor. here. Um, I, I think Jensen, you, you, you've met some of these people, but I, I am told that we have thousands and thousands of young people watching us right now. So hi everyone online. It's, it's what a wonderful thing to be here. So about cognitive research, um, I think, you know, Jensen talked about intelligence, right? We've heard about we need to own our intelligence and that is exactly what the cognitive scientists do. So my own research is try to understand what really is intelligence, like what is the origins of intelligence and what is the mechanism that bring us to intelligence. And one thing that's very interesting that I want to share with all of you is that intelligence is not as you think that, you know, the really amazing AI only, or if you think about the, the most intelligent person like Einstein. Intelligence is everywhere. The fact that you know how to sit. Do you know how difficult it is to sit? Because you have to calculate every single movement of your body and calculate the pressure, the momentum, everything in order for you to be able to sit well. That's intelligence. And so behind all those, we try to understand what is the algorithm that gives rise to those seemingly simple but very intelligent movement. So there are two things that are very interesting if you look at now the, the human side, so to speak. The first one is that we now know that humans, unlike AI, actually can thrive from very small amount of data. So with just a small amount of data, six months old, can already distinguish between cats and dogs. And they would never make mistakes. And there are actual studies that six months old can tell apart cats and dogs. And you know that even now with the amazing AI, image recognition is not 100% correct with cats and dogs. And if you think about six months old, how many cats and dogs have they seen? How many? Take a guess. I mean, certainly it's not billions. It's probably not even in the hundreds of thousands, right? But with just maybe thousands of images of cats and dogs, you are able, a six months old are able to distinguish and abstract what is a cat and what is a dog. And we still don't know what is that representation. So that's the first one. Humans can actually learn from a very small amount of data. The second one, humans like AI employ statistical learning. So AI, you know, LLM is trained on a huge amount of data and try to make sense from that amount of data using statistics. Humans use statistics as well. So if you think about it, a three-year-old were never told how to actually, what is exactly the grammar of their language. You know, in Indonesian, we say buku merah. So the noun first, then the adjective afterwards. But in English, it's the other way around. Read book, the adjective before the noun. And 
three-year-olds growing up in Indonesia and three-year-olds growing up in um, three-year-olds growing up in the U.S. are never told about first put the noun or first put the adjective, but they can but can they do that? And that's using statistical modeling. So the statistics are there. But one thing that's really interesting is that a lot of the deep insights don't come from statistical thinking. Instead, a lot of the deep insights actually come from analogical thinking, from seeing Analogy. relations and similarities of patterns between events and between domains. So one of the best example is um, Niels Bohr. So many of you probably know that Niels Bohr won the Nobel Prize for discovering the structure of atoms. Do you know how he discovered those? He didn't discover that from getting so many data. Instead, well that too probably, but instead the insight, the key moment of insight is that he looked at the structure of the solar system and he asked himself, maybe even though the sun and the atom are very different things, but maybe the structure is the same structure. And that's what brought his insight. And that, that's, that's what I call um, analogical thinking. So analogical these thinking. two, being able to use a small amount of data and having insights from seeing patterns, seeing similarities, analogical thinking, is um, what we have understood now by a really great algorithms that humans can employ in order to, to produce great thinking. So, I enjoy listening to her talk. <laughs> can you so, hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I was saying okay. I enjoy listening to her oh, talk. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yes. Professor Christie. So if we think about, if we ask ourselves about ecosystem, um, I think it's going to be the same uh, whether it's for AI or any other endeavor. Um, I want to pick up on Jensen's amazing point that you should do the things that you don't know. Um, what is that? What is that thing? You should you should research um, things that have never been done before. Um, that really is critical. That that is what the research is. You are asking a question, and you're trying to get an answer to that question. Okay, so. If we think about what is that ecosystem that allows us to do that, there, there are a number of things. And it, the first thing is that from the doers of the ecosystem, the one who's asking the question, you really have to ask the questions. And in cognitive science, the fancy word of this is that you got to have to have active learning mindset. So active learning seems a fancy word, but it, it truly is uh, something that's real. And active learning means that the learner needs to always ask the thing that I get. You know, in cognitive science, we always think about information processing. The in there's so many informations in the world. Right now, you're listening to what I say. You may be paying attention to gesture of Jensen, or the mimicry of Professor Ayu. All these are information. And when that information comes in, if you're an active learner rather than a passive learner, you want to be asking, why? Why is that information there? Do I want to take up that information? How is that information is actually connected to the information that I got yesterday or the information that I might get tomorrow? So this is what active learning is. So when you read, you don't just read. You ask, like, why, why is the writer wrote what he wrote there? Okay, why am I given this uh, exam question by my uh, faculty? So the, the, the doer of these, you know, in the ecosystem of research must be an active learning. Machine learning is active learning. Yeah. Stochastic gradient Stochastic descent gradient is, requires absolutely. first a guess. Yeah. Yeah. Before it could be before it corrected. Could, before yeah. it could be Reinforcement learning is active learning. Yeah. Before, yeah. Right, before you can improve, you have to do something. That's right. That's Even right. if it's random. Even if it's random. And you need to get, come up with pre predictability, right? You need that's to come up with right. predictions. And so that's what we have to do too. By the way, that, that is 
that is a very big part of innovation. Yeah. A very big part of success is first doing. Yeah. Bias to action is very important part of success. Sometimes, as machine learning will tell you, even a random first guess is better than not guessing at all. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, active learning is really important. Yeah. And, and you know, we have this ability of active learning ever since we were very, very young. If you ever take, um, if you remember or ever pay attention to children playing, do you know, no one ever told the playing, do you know what playing is? Playing is problem solving all the time. There's only one swing and there are five people who want to play in that swing. You got to solve the problem. Okay, I go first only for one minute, even though sometimes you don't know what one minute is when you're young. No, I'll okay? sit, you push. Okay, you push, all right. Yeah, I say you push. <laughs> These are all problems and we can, We can all play together. I'll sit, you push. That's right. <laughs> Whether you agree or not to do that, right? So you have to actively solve the problems and you have to decide yourself what is the problem you want to solve and how do you want to solve it with a cooperation. So play, it turns out, is a very, very important mechanism. So in the ecosystem, when you do active learning, it's like you want to play and don't lose it when you're adults. You need to keep that playing like actively, like I want to do something. I want to find out the solution. So that's, that's really important. To build an ecosystem, the first thing that has to happen is the ecosystem must believe it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In order to build an ecosystem, you need a starting point. Today, you have a starting point. Yeah. For yeah. the very first time, there is an artificial intelligence starting point in Indonesia.